This is Boxing Tickets NA in association with SB Sports. We are delighted to be joined once again with the Kingdom Warrior, Kevin Cronin. We've woke you up a bed early on a Saturday morning. We wanted to get this interview done and dusted. Um, how are you things with you? Obviously, I guess, first and foremost, it's been a, a few weeks since I've seen you in Belfast. Yeah, yeah things are good. Um, everything's good. Back in camp, everything. So it is what it is. We, we, we lost the fight, whatever we got over and got back to work, you know. So here we go again. Here we go again. I think sometimes they say, you know, it's, you know, don't judge a man by how he wins, but obviously judges a man by how he lose, loses. Obviously, I've always held you in high regard. I know we've a laugh and everything else, and you've named yourself me on, on Zoom today. But but you always, you know, you're always held in high regard. And, and I think the manner in which, obviously, in defeat, you know, you were straight away, you're happy to do interviews. You, you've been, you know... You, you spoke to Jamie and stuff afterwards in the fight. You were respectful throughout. I think that's sort of it's going to add to sort of your game in a way, Kevin, and, and the fact that people can see that even if you're you're beat, you're not blaming things. You're not blaming this or you're blaming that for it. You're just like, it happens. We're happy to move on. And that's that's a great sort of role model they sort of have for the younger ones coming through that you've had a defeat. You've licked your wounds and you're ready to go again. Yeah, well, look, there was, you know, the fight was there for everyone to see, everyone can judge it for themselves, but at the end of the day, once I got out of the ring, like, you know, the, whatever the decision was, 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 like, you know, wasn't going to be changed, can't be overturned, so, like, you know, there's no point in feeling sorry for yourself or walking around complaining, complaining about it, you know, um, yeah, look, it's, it, well, look, I'm not saying it doesn't bother me that, you know, that I didn't get the mad, but, there's nothing we can do, but we have to get over. We can't be, you know, we can't just be sitting back and not training because of it. Like, you know, we, I had my, what do I have? Maybe a weekend off or a couple of days after that. Then and we're straight back to training. Joe, what's next? What's next? Are we going to get the rematch? What offers? Joe, let's look at the, all these offers that were sent in. You know, what's what's the best one? What will we take? And I went, I went to the take everything and I was being told, you know, slow down, you know, let's see what else comes in kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, lucky enough, you know, we got a good offer and um, Irish title, you know. So there's not many, not many people, you know, that don't get the nod in their last fight, get upgraded to an Irish title, you know. So um, it speaks for itself, you know. It, is that is that you and the person? Obviously, the fact that you've obviously experienced defeat as first time as a pro. You, you've 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 tasted defeat before, so you know what it's like. But it's just the fact of rather than crying sort of over spilt milk and obviously the defeat. Get back on the horse, and and the, I guess the only thing you can do to try and right the wrongs is, is to get back in the camp and get a fight to get back to one in ways to show, you know, where you sort of said where your slow start cost you, where you can fix them errors and obviously change it from an L and a W the next time. Yeah, hundred percent. Look like I was, I was I was saying just after the fight, the the fear of losing the O was worse than losing the O like you know it's it, it, people just got to stop overthinking things you know and uh, it was never uh, not in the sport never was you know to pad a record or go to 20 and 0 fighting nobody's like you know I knew I was wanted these tough fights I've been calling for them for a long time you know there was plenty of fights for me to happen and circumstances happened you know um, but yeah look, I'm delighted to be involved in these these fights now, I think it was, it was a Caleb Plant said something like, you know, you know the risk coming into the sport and he was going to take all the risks, you know, and willing to crash and burn on his way to the top kind of thing. And so you know, it's, it's the same mindset I have. So you know, we're, we're going to meet little bumps in the road, but, you know, they're either going to be the making of you or or you can go away and feel sorry for yourself and let your career run down the drain, you know, and I definitely, definitely want it to be the making of me and, you know, just how things have been going since. It, I know it's the making of me. Um, obviously, I won't say too much about training and what we're doing and all that, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely think it's the making of me. It's, it's, you know, it. I guess it's, it's already to lose, isn't it? Obviously, in, in boxing and as well. And, and I guess you know, when you, when you lose, probably sometimes so early on, it's easier to take. You know, you see these fighters where they get the 16, 17 and 0, and then they get a defeat, and then their enthusiasm for the sport's completely gone. Whereas you've had it sort of relatively early on in your career. So it's not going to define 
where you where you're going to go to if you're making mistakes or anything like that you can quickly rectify them rather than you know a lot more wins down the line and then the complete deflation obviously and the fact that what do I do to fix this you know where do I write me sort of wrongs what fight do you sort of look at as the the where was a sort of downfall on that whereas you're going I know what I've done wrong and I can fix it easy yeah and look if I, if I got the nod the last day and we, we, we still probably would have got the rematch for the Irish title. Let's say I got the nod. Would I be fixing as many things as I'm fixing now? Probably not, you know. Because um, you don't look at it as bad like that. You are looking to, to where was the problem. You know, where did you go wrong and all that. Um, but yeah, look, as you say there, like some people maybe go 17, 18, no. And some of them fight good fighters. A lot, of, Most of them probably, you know, built up with false confidence. And, you know, that's why... That's why the knock is a lot harder than, but yeah, look, I'm happy to get my learning fight, my sixth fight, rather than in my 20th fight, taking a little step up, you know, then thinking, oh, what a waste of money, what a waste of this, what a waste of that. And another three years down the line, and it being another three years down the line, you know, so it's more time wasted where you could have been working on things. So uh, I'm, in, I'm in a good place, you know, I wasn't kicking myself after it. I still, you know, like there was meant to be an after party, you know, if I won the next day or the next evening in the local bar. And I said, fuck it, what's the point in feeling sorry for myself? We still went to it, like in a big crowd, still showed up. The bar was packed, like still for it, you know. So again, what was the point in sitting at home feeling sorry for myself? Go out and call them people for tuning in and watching. And that's, you know, that's why they come out to see me. And, you know, that's what helps me build on as well, you know, seeing that even even with a, a loss or a learning fight, I call it, you know, even with that, just still coming out to give you your congratulations and tell you how well you've done and all that. So, um, yeah, I'm in a, in a very good place. There's not, I guess sometimes, you know, it's, you know, we've seen it in the past where, where someone's had a defeat and they hardly get any messages whatsoever. You're, you're still getting people, you know, messaging you flat out, supporting you, obviously coming to the bar for a, for a, a welcoming home sort of party. That that to you is obviously what exactly you want. You know, you want you don't want supporters to be there just when you're winning. You want them to be there to pick you up and obviously you taste the feet and stuff as well. So that that again obviously shows a testament to the person that you are that even in defeat, you don't have these bandwagon jumpers that are just coming because you had a title fight. They're there to support you, win, lose, or draw, you know, and I guess that, that'll hit home a lot to you. Yeah. Like, like I guess we won't go too much into it, but it what would you call him, maybe a social media fighter? Do you know, mm-hmm. someone who builds up their record, builds up their record, and everyone's following him, you know, he's undefeated, undefeated. That's all they like to talk about kind of thing, and then they lose, and, you know, all the hundreds or thousands of likes they're getting on social media are gone, you know, that's that's not real. They're not really your supporters, like, you know, you're so, someone who's really your supporter, your fan is the person who's there for you, win, lose, or draw, you know, and um, no matter the result. And it was good, you know, that I got to see that. Um, not that I didn't know it already, you know, but, like, it's, it was a real eye-opener to see, geez, you know, they're still here and they're still, like, and even, I think, more of my own fans were calling for a rematch more than I was calling for a rematch. You know, I didn't have to call for a rematch other than after the fight when I said, oh, yeah, I want an immediate rematch. You know, that was kind of it. I put it out there. I let them, you know, that was just to kind of let Jamie's team and management know and, um, Everyone know really that I want the rematch, but after that, exploded down there. Like you know, what everyone wanted the rematch. Newspapers had it, so I didn't even do interviews, and it was in the newspapers the week after. You know, there has to be a rematch, this and that. Um. So yeah, look, it's um, the people want it. You know, Jamie wants it. I want it. We get upgraded to an Irish title, top fifteen European ranking. You know, and it's happening. You know, it's uh, it's unbelievable, really, and then to be live on ESPN and TG4, as you say, like, uh, I think we'll both become very big coming out of this fight. But I think the winner is going to become, what did I say, a local superstar or a county superstar, or even maybe an Irish star, you know, and, and God only knows they could become something huge on the domestic scene or go chase down that European, European title and become something huge on the European and world stage. Like, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's so much to come out of this fight, you know, and um, it's grand talking, but you know what? 
it's at the end of the day, you got to win the fight first. I want to obviously, I'm sure you probably watched the fight back, you know, since, you know, I know, I know obviously after the fight, and when I said it to both you and Andy, the Jamie, that obviously I'd, I'd scored it to you, I think 96, 94. And when I watched it back, I obviously scored it a draw. Was that sort of close of a fight? When you sort of watched it back, did you sort of score it or were you sort of, I guess, obviously, when you've tasted the fig, you're sort of, were you looking more at things you'd done wrong or when you look, watch the back, what sort of way did you analyse the fight? Were you looking at where you went wrong or where were you sort of, what were you looking at? Um, I probably watched the back the first one or two times, just like, look at this in like, did I lose it? Did I lose it? John, I still, um, I know you didn't score or you changed it slightly with your decision, but it was still scoring the win to me. Um, it was I, uh, I, I scored it actually by three to me uh, when I watched it back. I had it by two in the night. Um, but look, as you say, like there was some close rounds in there, you know, the early rounds, pff, you know, some of them are close as well. Um, but look, as, as I say, look, it, it's it's uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. That's the decision. Um, but yeah, watched it back, looking for things I done wrong, you know, little things, stupid things I done, and um. To be honest, I didn't need to really watch it back for that reason. As in, I'm not here to make excuses, but you know, I didn't. I it disgusts me my performance in the night. You know, um, I don't really like watching it. I watched it to score it, and I don't like watching it because I'm. It disgusts me watching the performance I put in, kind of thing. You know, um, like everything we worked on went out the window, and look, I, it can happen because. Like it was so, you were there. It was so loud in there. You know, it was just, it was just the atmosphere it was, was incredible as well. Yeah, it was electric. Like you know, we couldn't hear couldn't hear the bells in between rounds. You know, and um, the very first round, my nose went, and I had to breathe through my mouth, um, for for eight rounds because it was early in the first round when I got caught in the nose and my nose went and I couldn't breathe through my nose, and I was breathing through my mouth. Um, which I think is another big testament to Johnny and you know and the team because. <clears throat> it's something that actually hasn't even been said yet because I think it was such a good fight. Everyone's kind of forgetting about what they're not looking into it as much. But the conditioning for that fight was crazy. Like, I've not actually seen someone to go through a pace like that and outpace someone for that long of a time breathing through their mouth and not being able to breathe through their nostrils, like breathing through their mouth while there's blood flowing down and flowing into their mouth, you know. Um, so like I think there's a big testament to Johnny and them there for the condition they got me into for that fight and to finish the stronger as well you know with, without a nose you know um, and I kind of look when I look back at it it's, it's like I say it serves me right for getting my nose busted because you know I decided not to move my head in the first round you know and get, get caught up in a scrap straight away like um, and I look it's a, it's a learning curve you know I have that experience now I know James, Jamie's third domestic our third big fight, you'd say. So, you know, I kind of felt that experience before. Um, I didn't. Now I have. So, you know, I have that bit of experience in the back pocket now. And um, But, yeah, look, I'm... It didn't dim my confidence, you know. I'm very, very confident going in. Very confident going into this rematch, you know. Um, most people, you know, 99 out of 100 people probably wouldn't go into an immediate rematch. You know, I did. They'd want to go away and fight a few journeymen and build their confidence up again. And it didn't dim my confidence. It didn't dim my confidence in the slightest. You know, I know I'm the better fighter. And, you know, I just need to just need to go back now in the rematch and prove it. That's all. Do you take your sort of confidence from the, the finish you sort of had to the fight? It sort of looked at one stage that, that Jamie was gone in the seventh round. And and I think you'd, you'd sort of mentioned that you're, you tweaked your shoulder and you could sort of see it in the footage. You know, in the, in the last round, do you take your confidence now getting into the rematch and how you finish the fight, and I guess two more rounds as well. You know, do you look at that as a as a as a positive for you, knowing that well, look, if I can nearly have a mountain his feet with an eight, what am I going to do when it's over ten? When I when I've when I've changed wee parts of of obviously what I've done in the first fight. Yeah, I don't I don't take confidence from the first fight. Look, the ten rounds suit me better. I said it since. I've been saying it a long time, you know, that when I step up to six, I'll be better at six than four. When I step up to eight, I'll be better at eight and six. And when I step up to 10 and 12, I'll be better 
at each step because that's the way my engine runs and you know people decided not to believe me because I was saying it but I wasn't getting in step ups you know but I kind of proved it a bit the last day um, to be doing that and again breathing through my mouth and I don't think people know how hard that is you know and there was hard enough breathing in boxing not to mind breathing without a nose like you know um, no I don't take the confidence from the fight as I say I was disgusted with my performance I take the confidence from the work we do behind the scenes you know sparring some good good fellas we're mixing then Joe we change up the spares there's some, there's some crazy good lads being mixed in the sparring you know taking one in putting the or taking one out putting the other in you know it's I'm constantly being asked questions and you know um, the closer it gets to a fight I start answering them questions you know and answering them big time that's where I take my confidence from the work that goes in behind the scenes not so much the last fight because as I say look I was I wasn't too pleased I can't watch it back you know and um, even though I still tie one, you know, but I just don't, I just wasn't happy with my performance, but, um, yeah, sorry, no, I, I had something in my head, I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't think of it now, but it's gone, but yeah, look, that's, that's where I get my confidence from, is the work that goes in behind the scenes. Obviously, in less than six weeks' time, you know, I guess, you know, it's a, it's a testament to, to you as well, that so many people wondered, I'd, I'd spoke to you the next morning, and I had obviously said that, obviously, I've been speaking to Jamie Conlon, he watched the fight, and he wanted it for he wanted to put the rematch on on Galway. Um, is it is it obviously a testament to you and probably also the the Jamie as well at the fact that the bigger guys in sort of Irish boxing, you know, Conlon boxing would be regarded as probably as, as as the biggest we sort of have on the island here. Is that is that a positive for you? The fact that yes, you're going to be on ESPN Plus in America. You're going to be on TG Four free all around Ireland. And you obviously have the biggest promoter in Ireland in Conan Boxing, you know, wanting to put this rematch on. Is that an honour for you and the fact that you're able to get on Kier Malloy's homecoming card? Card sold out in Galway. You've no tickets left. Nobody's any tickets left. Five weeks of just training and doing what you should do as a boxer rather than have to run about selling tickets. This is a perfect, perfect opportunity. Yeah, I think it's a huge compliment to to me and Jamie as fighters, you know, because it's Kieran Malloy was due his homecoming from Condon Boxing. They're giving him his homecoming. So what the next? What's the next thing they were going to look into? What's the best possible fight to put as the co-main event? Do you know what's the best fight out there to put as the co-main event? And you know they've they've a few boxers signed themselves that they could have got. They could have got title fights for and stuff, you know. But when they went looking. It was us that they seen as the best possible co-main event, you know. So that's a huge compliment to me and Jamie as fighters, you know. And to just us as boxers in general, like, you know, I do think we're both kind of beyond, like, you know, we're, we're ready for European level kind of thing, you know. Um, and it just makes it all that bit more interesting, you know. You have two very good lads getting in the ring together. Um, we, yeah, look, a huge thanks to Jamie for giving us this opportunity as well. Jamie, um, Jamie Condon for giving us this opportunity, like live on ESPN, you know, and, um, and Irish TV as well. So, pff, you know, this early in my career, you know, um, people wait till they're 17, 18 fights in, you know, sometimes before fighting for the Irish title, or I suppose 10 fights really kind of thing, it, they'd be fighting for the Irish title. Um, here I am, you know. Looking for my sixth win for an Irish title, and Jamie, Jamie Morris is the same, you know. So it's, I think it's, <clears throat> it's huge praise for our careers, John, for us as boxers, and it just kind of shows the level we're at. Like you know, um, we don't have to take this fight right now, you know. We could, we could go away and we could, right now, lock in a few, a few basically guaranteed wins but we're not doing that you know we're jumping straight back into the fire and um John we just got to see who gets out of it I, I think it was sort of you alluded to obviously in the first fight that we could potentially obviously have a you know an Irish style Gaddy versus Ward trilogy you know you won the rematch you know everybody's probably dep depends I guess on how the rematch goes you know if, if you were to, to stop Jamie in a round then there's sort of there's not really that sort of thing for the the, the trilogy yeah. fight but but you won this rematch you know it could be set up for a trilogy fight and <laughs> who knows where the trilogy fight could end up it could end up in Croke Park and in, in September if uh, you know if Katie Taylor comes through the Cameron fight and looks at the Serrano fight 
he's got an even bigger platform once again to, to go with it. But I guess you don't want to look too far ahead past, you know, 21st of April. It's get back in the ring, get back to winning ways, get the Irish title around your waist, and then see what opportunities are, are lying then. Yeah, 100%. Look, as I say, Bo, I think the two fighters are going to become stars out of this, but the winner could become John Irish superstar out of this kind of thing. Um, it's that big a platform, like you know, it's fucking ESPN. You know, they have world titles as their co main events. Do you know how more here fighting as the co main event for the Irish title? And again, it says a lot about me and Jamie's fighters. Um, but yeah, as they say, Gary Ward kind of thing. But um, I think I talked too much about that the last fight, you know, as in I had war in my head and I went to war. Um, I was disgusted with my performance, you know, I wanted. I, I want no questions being asked after the next fight. You know, I want to win every second of every round from the very first bell kind of thing, you know. And look, if, but, you know, even if I beat the brakes off Jamie, you know, and they were shouting for a rematch, it'd still be hard to say no, you know, because they could have walked away from this one as well. Like. Obviously, documentary obviously came out obviously after the fight, and I, and I thought it was incredible. Only for the fact that I was the, the introduction sort of to it, you know, I sort of built it up. And I'm still waiting from the commission, by the way, from that, Kevin. You, um, I think it was a hundred grand. You said I was getting commission from a cameo appearance, and obviously, I guess yeah, the question we, is, we, is we, does we everyone... we'd, um, we'd knock it off what you owed me for all the, <laughs> the interviews. <laughs> it was me and you text me, tell me how much you pay me to come on, and then I come on, but I never see it. <laughs> Your but again, would be down. But I guess obviously, you know, we're gonna have a documentary for the rematch again. Obviously, um I thought the, the production was incredible. I guess the only thing missing from it was I guess the one at the end, you know, is the emotions in, in play for because I know that you sort of ended the last one by sort of saying, you know, to be concluded, sort of thing. Is a good mm. is a documentary gonna be in second time around here and you know, I guess a different ending outcome this time. Yeah, um, yeah. Look, this toy really does all that. You know, I had nothing to do with the production or how, you know, how it was edited and like that. You know, Tig's, Tig's doing that, and Tig's good at what he does. Like you know, and uh, if you can see it from the documentary, it was just a, it was unfortunate that I didn't have him throw camp really last time. Um, it kind of didn't really start it till the start of the fight. I had him during lockdown as well, so that's kind of where some of the pre footage came from. And yeah, it just finished. And then the I think our fight was announced a couple of days later than the rematch. So um it could have been good to hit that at the end. But yeah, look, uh, he's and he's gonna be coming in this camp for a bit of camp as well, doing some recording and he'll be there fight night. And yeah, there's there'll definitely be another one done, but I won't be, you know, I won't be doing anything with it kind of thing, you know. I, I'm just worrying about my training and whatever footage he gets, he gets and he'll do the documentary then or whatever it'll be next time round, you know, but yeah, people seem to enjoy it and people liked it. And, um, you know what, it kept uh, it kept the fight relevant for a couple of weeks after the fight kind of thing, you know, to build up then people want to see it and then they see it and then they're kind of back to, oh, you know, we thought you won or it might have been closer than what we thought or it could have been wider than what we thought things, you know, so the fight was still relevant and, um, you know, as much boxes as we are and all that, you know, you gotta you gotta have your businessman side too, you know, and keep people relevant. And uh, this boxing's a business, you know, <laughs> a business you don't you don't get paid well for, but it's um it's a business, and um, yeah, you just gotta put on the businessman cap sometimes. Definitely. Well, look, obviously, I'll, I'll thank you obviously very much for your time. I wanted to get, I wanted to get this out um sort of early on, sort of you know before we get closer to the fight fight week and everything else. Obviously, I'm hoping to get. Jamie on next week as well so that can give you a few weeks to focus on your fights rather than than doing the media sort of things but obviously Mm -hmm. I'd normally ask at this stage for sort of what you think is a prediction but I sort of could gather sort of and I'm sure people watch me able to gather through it that you want to win this fight convincingly and you're not really going to be a prediction sort of person the fact that a win's all that matters yeah win's all that matters Uh, prediction I I think I think I can get him out without the rematch that's the prediction I'd give, but I'd be ready to to win every round as well, you know, if that's what it comes to. Well, listen, thanks very much for your time. Um, obviously, just over five weeks to go until um, your co-main event, Kermaloy's homecoming in Galway. 
Um, I'm sure they'll obviously catch up with you in fight week. Um, obviously, I know you and the missus are heading out for a coffee now. I hope you're going to get your wallet out for once and, and buy the coffees and maybe buy her some breakfast. Yeah, I would, I'd get my wallet out if you pay me. I'm broke, <laughs> I'm not getting paid. <laughs> well, listen, thanks very much for your time. And I'm sure we'll catch you again yeah. very, very soon. Nice one. Thanks, Dean. Cheers, Kevin. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.